This is part two in the Craftsman Emerson Gen 4 commercial drill press rebuild series. If you haven't seen part one, click the link at the top of the screen. In this video, we will be disassembling the drill press. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. We got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. First thing I'm going to do is remove the Pressmate table lift accessory on this drill press. And it attaches to the table through the chuck key holder hole that's in the table. So we just remove that bolt or the nut and the press mate crank can be lifted up. And we need to let out a little bit of the tension on the bearing that travels on the shelf at the top. And then we can just pop that bolt back through, pick it up off the ground. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove the tilt table. So this tilt table actually is supposed to have a pin that holds it at its different angles. And then there's a bolt that you can tighten it down with. And that bolt goes all the way to the column. So I'm just loosening that bolt. It doesn't have the pin that's supposed to come with the table. So I'm going to have to fabricate that later on. And there we go. There's the bolt. Next, we're just going to remove the shelf collar for the press mate. And it's got two screws that go through it. And it's made of aluminum and it's two parts. If you haven't seen the Pressmate video, I'll link it here at the top of the screen. So once we've got the collar off of there, we can remove the chuck. And we're ready to start really disassembling it. We'll go ahead and remove the belt cover. These two brackets just fit into holes that are in the head itself. So you can just push them inward and then work the other side out like so. And next we're going to remove the tension adjustment arm. So it's got a screw on the end and you can go ahead and remove that. It's got some grime on it, so it doesn't want to move through well. I'll drop it. And then the bracket that the rod slides in just unscrews from the head. Now that yellow cap and the black cap that are on that rod come off and then we can unscrew it the rest of the way and then pick up that bolt. Next we're going to remove the motor. So the motor is hinged on the side that I'm on and it has two cone point set screws that use a 532nd Allen and then they have jam nuts on those set screws. So you just need to loosen the jam nuts and then you can use the Allen wrench to uh, extract the set screws. You're going to want to unplug the motor and keep a good hand on the motor because once one of these is high enough or low enough to clear the bracket that's on the head, that motor will fall right off of there if you're not holding on to it. And there we go. 
So 90% of this disassembly procedure is the same whether you're doing a Gen 3 or a Gen 4 standard Emerson or commercial drill press. Uh, the only real difference comes when you start disassembling the hub. And that's what we're going to do next. We lowered the table a little bit so that we can access the quill. And here I'm just holding on to the quill and I'm letting the tension out of the feed return spring. And once I've got it to the point that it's not pulling the quill back up, that's where we want it. And now we need to remove that black cap that's on the end. So I'm just using a paint scraper to get up under it and I'm just gently prying it up. And then you should be able to just pop it off of there. So inside there you can see the spring and the spring is being held in place by a roll pin. And all I'm doing here is moving it so that I can get access to that roll pin where the feed handles aren't in the way. And I'm just using a quarter inch punch to push the roll pin out and I'm going to use the punch to hold the spring for the time being. Next we're going to remove the feed stop collar. So you've got the fine adjustment on top. And then the quick adjustment. That has a shoe on the inside of it, so make sure you don't drop it. Then we can pull out on the hub and extract the quill spindle assembly. Next, we're going to remove the hub pinion assembly. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to release the spring. And then pull out on the hub a little bit. And then we can reach up inside and disengage the spring on the inside from the roll pin that it sits on. Next, I'm using a one and three quarter crow's foot wrench to start twisting out that eccentric bearing for the pinion backlash. On my other commercial model, it's a lot easier to get out, but on this one, it's in there really tight. So, and I'm using a screwdriver to kind of push it as I twist it. I'll eventually get it out here in a second. There it is. Next, we'll go ahead and remove the quill lock. And you can remove the narrow or uh, the barrel and the nut. And then next, we're going to remove these three take-up set screws that are in the head for the quill take-up. I removed the top one and the bottom one, then the center one. I don't think it really matters, but that's how I do it. The top and the bottom work the same way. They uh, close the head and the center one expands that gap in the head. So it's got a little bit more pressure behind it. Now, each one of these screws are a different length and I'll show you the order they need to go in in a second here. The one on the left goes in the top and then the middle the middle and the one on the right the bottom. So Unlike the uh, 100s and the 150s, there is only one machine screw in Gen 4s and Gen 3 and Gen 4 commercial drill presses. And it's only on this side. Whereas like on a 100 or a 150, there's these machine screws on both sides. 
And this machine screw rests on top of the bottom bearing for the spindle pulley assembly bearings. So you have to remove it to be able to get that entire assembly out. So sometimes you can just lift the assembly straight out. But this one, the bottom bearing got hung up in the bore a little bit, which is no big deal. Even if you can't get the, the first bearing out, uh, you can use what I'm about to do here in a second, which is a wooden dowel. You just place it on the bottom of the assembly, not on the bearing, but on the assembly, and then just tap it out. And you'll see the bearing start to rise up out of there. There it is. And then we can just smack it. And there it is. So next we're going to go ahead and remove the head. So we just undo the lock and lift it straight up. It really helps that there are column collars that come with these Gen 4s. So now we're going to remove that column collar. And then we'll remove the table. And then the second column collar. Next, we're going to remove the column. So there's a, a screw down here that holds it in the base. And we just undo that screw. And then we should be able to just twist the column straight out of the base. There we go. I'm not sure why, but on the Gen 4s, both the standard and the commercial, they stopped using the shoe that's normally on the inside of the base. So that screw goes all the way to the column. And we're going to go ahead and remove the headlock. There's the nut and the barrel. And again, those yellow plastic handle covers can be slid off of the handle. We're going to go ahead and pull that bulb out of there. So that's an incandescent bulb. I always use LED bulbs. I can get them really white, really bright bulb, and I prefer them over an incandescent bulb. Next, we're going to go ahead and remove the switch panel. So this has four screws on it, and sometimes they get kind of hung up in there, so a little pair of needle nose to grab onto the screw and pull it out, no big deal. And then just pull it straight out, and there's wires that are attached to terminals on the back of each one of those switches, total of four wires. And what I like to do, since I'm not an electrician, is just mark each one of those wires so I know where they go when I reassemble this thing. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. I'm just marking them with top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. Since the switches can go only go in a certain way, that will ensure that I'm connecting the correct wires to the correct switches. And again, this is the same whether you're working on a Gen 4 standard model or a Gen 4 commercial model. 
unless you've got the one switch Gen 4, which I have, in which case it's a little bit different, but, you know, it's not rocket science. You can look at it and figure it out. And then we've got the plate off of there. Mark that last wire. Now we're going to disassemble this switch panel, switch plate. So the silver area on the front is a separate piece of aluminum. But to get it off of there, you have to remove the lockout on that safety switch. Sorry about that. And there it is. And then there's two screws for each switch, one on top and one on bottom that hold the switch in the plate. So we'll just undo those screws and then the switch will come right out of there. Same for the other switch. Now these wires go around, there's a roll pin right there, and they feed around that to stay out of the way of the quill. And now we're going to go ahead and remove the power panel. So it has this cover on top, which is held in place by two screws. And all it's doing is protecting the wiring that's under it. Sometimes there will be lock washers under the screws. And there's the wiring that I was talking about. And then the panel itself is held in place with two screws. And then we can just fish the wiring out of the head around that roll pin. And then we can lift the panel out and fish the power cord out of there. Move the head to the side. So next, we're going to be disassembling this entire power panel. But a good thing to do, especially if you're not an electrician, is go ahead and undo that plastic clip and let those uh, pigtails out and... Lay them out so that you can see where the wires are going and how they connect. And then grab your cell phone and take a couple pictures. That way when you go back to reassemble all of this, you can just look at the pictures and you'll know how it goes. So we're just pushing that plastic clip back through the bracket. And then we're going to remove the socket. It's 
So certainly if you're just disassembling the drill press to put new bearings in it and clean it up a little bit, you don't have to do all of this. You can leave this assembled. Um, but I'm going to be repainting everything, so I'm disassembling everything. There's your ground. And these screws were in there really tight. I had to use a stubby screwdriver to get to them. Really put some torque on them. This one, not so bad, but the other one, man, it was in there. But we eventually got it out, no problem. And there was a washer that I needed to knock loose. And to really disassemble it any further, I have to cut off these, uh, these crimped on terminal covers, which I'm doing with a pair of uh, dikes. But again, if you don't have to do this, don't do this. Um, but if you're going to repaint it, you know, and you want to really rebuild this drill press, then have at it. Just make sure you've got those pictures so you can put all that back together. Because it's a hot mess of wires that if you get one wrong, things aren't going to work right. So next, we're going to remove that receptacle for the motor power. And it's got two metal clips on the sides, and all you've got to do is compress them and then push it through the bracket. And there it is. And then the power cord itself has got a plastic wire relief that snaps into this bracket so you just need to compress it with a pair of pliers and push it through that's the power panel and the last thing we're going to be doing is removing the data panels and the model number panel off of the head and i'm using like a 1.5 millimeter quarter inch um, Allen that I've got held into a pair of vice grips and I'm just lining it up just like I would for a punch on the back side of those drive screws and I'm just tapping it with a hammer and it pushes those drive screws out of the head So sometimes they'll stay inside the panel, but they're out of the head, which is fine. We can get them out later. So we're removing the two top ones on the side panels first. And I'm going to show pretty much all of this because there's some real tight areas you've got to get into. And uh, back when I did this with my standard Gen 4, I had a lot of people asking me questions on how you how you remove these panels. So I'm showing it here. And it just really takes patience. That little bitty Allen wrench wants to keep slipping off of the, uh, the tip of those drive screws that's punching through the head. 
But once you get them started, they come out pretty good. This one is giving me a hard time, though. And of course, that little bitty bit that I've got there, the Allen bit, wants to keep turning after I'm hitting it. There you go. So that was the easy ones. The other ones are going to get real hard. So for this, I'm using an actual full size 1 16th of an inch punch, I believe. To get the model number off the back of the head. And it's long enough that I can stick my little hammer in the hole in the head for the light bulb to tap on it. And I'm just using the vice grips to hold the punch in place so it's staying on top of that drive screw. And the left side came through, but the right side, the head is sitting too low to the table, so I need to stick a little board in there. But actually, it just fell right off after that, so no big deal. Then we can get that panel out of there. There it is. And putting that 1.5 millimeter bit back inside the vice grip, we've got to remove the two bottom drive screws on each one of the side panels. And these are the hardest to remove because you don't have a lot of area to swing your hammer. So, and they're really hard to see especially if the head is real dirty on the inside. So I've got a light there that is helping out a little bit. And I'm having to turn my hammer sideways because there's just not enough room to swing that hammer. But it doesn't take a whole lot of force to get those drive screws out, luckily. So if you can get whatever you're using on the tip of it and hit it, tap it enough times, it'll, it'll come out. And I'm realizing that it's protruding through the head a little bit, so I'm going to knock it down and then drive it out. So just some patience and you'll be able to get it. Now, if you're going to be soaking these parts in simple green, then you definitely need to remove these panels because if you soak them in simple green with the panels on them, when you pull it out of the simple green, those panels will be completely blank because the simple green will take all of the graphics right off of them. And this one is the hardest, uh, the back ones, because you've got the smallest area to work with. But you can see the panel dropped out. And there it is. So it's still got all four of those drive screws stuck inside the panel, which is not really an issue. I've got a couple holes in my workbench down there. So I can just lay it over one of those holes and tap them out of the panel. That way we're not bending the panel trying to tap them out of there. Piece of cake. And the second panel is pretty much the same thing. We've got that real confined area to work with. But in any case, this will wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. 
I hope you found it interesting. If you did, please like and subscribe. As always, I appreciate everybody's support. And in video number three, we will be disassembling everything else that's on the table there. So the motor, hub pinion assembly, removing the chuck, all that good stuff. So that's it. Thank you. And I will see you next time.